Unfortunately, um, our final speaker was not able to attend this afternoon, Josh um, from Natives for Nature. We had a last second um, uh, a work, uh, work issue just a few days ago, but we were lucky enough to, to record him yesterday evening. And uh, so um, Ashley's gonna pay, play his, uh, his recording and um, we'll, we'll end it, um, we'll say goodbye with a few words after Josh's words. Miha noone shivagnavi no nim herka noiha tomachar wishkoneha. My name is Joshua Andujo. I'm a tribal member of the Gapalino Tongva, San Gabriel Band of Michigan Indians, and I'm also the founder of Natives for Nature. We are a community ran organization based out of traditional Tongva territory. Tongva territory is from Malibu to Laguna Beach, the four Channel Islands going into San Bernardino. We shared, so when I tell people what the tribal maps and all that stuff, like, yes, it shows the areas we were in, but it doesn't really show the areas that we shared. Northern Los Angeles County, we shared with the Chumash, the San Fernando Valley, we shared with the Tataviam, San Bernardino, Riverside County, obviously we shared with the Serrano and the Cahuilla people, and then Orange County with the Ahashaman. People always want to know what exactly my organization is. And to be honest, I would say we're a variety of different things because we're constantly growing. We do everything from trash cleanups. That could be anywhere from the ocean. We just had one in the LA River. We do some in the San Gabriel Mountains. We do fire prevention cleanups where we'll pick up debris and any other flammable materials that could be anywhere again from the mountains. We also do it in the inner city areas. We did one in Whittier Narrows Nature Center, since that's the location of my ancestral village. A few more cleanups in the LA Riverbed. That's gonna be coming up later in the, I wanna say later towards the end of the year. Gonna have a hike coming up in October at Tongva Peak. Then we're gonna be doing one at Cucamonga Peak and one at Mount Baldy for anybody that's into backpacking or hiking, more than welcome to join us. Do survival workshops, cultural workshops. We'll do native plants, share um, on top surface information, whatever is shareable with public. We also do survival community hikes as well. We teach people how to go hiking, backpacking, camping, stuff like that. Actually, we have a hike coming up June, June 11th at Sandstone Peak and uh, Malibu, if anybody else wants to join us for that. Yeah, I teach people survival stuff for anything that want to know, like what type of items to carry with you at all times in your backpack, in your cars, or anything that you want to need in your house. If you're in wilderness survival, then I teach people how to do fires, how to sustain a fire, how to put out fires, compass and land navigation. Wilderness first aid, I don't give out the certification for that part, I just teach people like just basic common sense, what to do and how to react to certain things. Obviously, if you're not certified, I don't want you to put yourself in jeopardy and the person you're trying to help. So like, I just teach basic stuff on like how to react until professional help gets there. Another thing when I was saying about cultural stuff, I do try to make everything cultural related. So with the survival stuff, I know that that's something that we're learning about from the warrior culture that our warriors would do survival training as well. So I thought that was interesting that we're bringing that back. And I guess in a modern perspective, hiking, obviously that was our transportation back in the day, taking trade routes. So I teach people certain things that are, like I said, that is shareable. Um, we are trying to get more hikes within the San Gabriel Mountains since a lot of the people on my that support my organization don't really have a lot of experience. So I do try to teach people the basic stuff before even going out there. Oh, we also do native gardening restoration projects. We do work with local organizations that do try to bring back um, native habitats. We do community native gardens. Trying to bring back a necklace workshop in the memory of mine, Julia, but we still got to figure that out. Probably aiming more towards November, towards the like, towards the end of our acorn festival, I want to do like necklace related jewelry of acorn. I should say uh, acorn related jewelry. Claremont and towards November, that's the acorn festival. That's another one that's open to the public. 
But things opening up and events are starting to happen again. Hopefully, we start going out there because it's been a long time. But I want to say the event coming up that I know of for sure, well, that would have been coming up is Moon Patam. It's at the Long Beach Aquarium. And that's an interesting event because it's not just Tonga related. It's all the coastal tribes of Southern California. So you have a variety of Tonga, Hashiman, Chumash, Ohlone. You know, you have different. I know my tribe with COVID and everything, we're trying to keep uh, safety and stuff like that. We're going to be having the beach gathering or the beach day, the community beach day. That's going to be in July. If anybody wants to see anything of our tribe, I do recommend going to Heritage Park in Santa Fe Springs, California. They do have a village recreation site right there. If you're familiar with the Audubon, Deb, uh, Deb, the Audubon Center at Debs Park, they have another village recreation right there. Um, Mount Baldy Visiting Center is another. The Many Winters Gathering of Elders in San Pedro, that's usually at the end of October. And that's more of, like, I guess a ceremony that's open to the public. I know they do have protocol of, like, no recording and taking pictures. But it is a chance for non-Native people to experience a ceremony and to share with not just California tribes, but you have tribes from all over. I've met people from Canada, met people from South America and Mexico. So it's interesting for everybody that comes together during this time of the year towards uh, um, October. The history behind that was when the city of Los Angeles was honoring Christopher Columbus during that time. So the Native community out here decided, well, instead of honoring Christopher Columbus, like this is a way of Native people to heal. And yeah, I recommend everybody go and check that out. When we do start having um, cultural events, I will be posting them on Natives for Nature. Pitzer College, I know they have a couple of Tonga murals about our people. If you ever have the time to go out there and check it out, I do recommend them. I know they're by uh, Joe Galarza. Oh, another thing too, um, now that it, museums are starting to open up, uh, if you ever have time to go to the Natural History Museum of Los Angeles, I know they have an exhibit on us. Um, we are going to have a Tiat display, which is one of our plain canoes. Us and the Chumash are the, probably the only tribes that I know of that did use plain canoes out in the ocean. So they have a display of that. They have a display of our jewelry. A few other things. I know they mentioned about the mission era as well. And after, like the Mexican era, then going into the Mexican um, American era. But there's also a video that they show of Tongva people nowadays. And it's, again, like I said earlier, it's showing about what we are nowadays, cultural educators or anything like that. The Autry Museum, I don't know if that's going to be opening up anytime soon, but they also have a nice exhibit about California natives. They have a lot of our art, um, don't really call them artifacts, we call them ancestral creations, but they have a lot of our stuff right there. I think I want to call it Bowers Museum in Santa Ana. I, could be getting the name wrong, but that's another history museum in Santa Ana. They have some of our stuff right there as well. If anybody's curious to ever learn stuff like that, I do recommend checking it out. Uh, Smith Park in San Gabriel, they have like a little plaque, but they also have a lot of our, um, it's like a little mirror, I guess, on tile, painted tile. They do have a lot of our stuff right there that's cultural related. They show like our key, our instruments, the stuff that we use to hunt, like our weapons, it has pictographs. That's another thing that's also interesting. Uh, Tongva Park in Santa Monica was also dedicated to us. You know, again, thank you for having me be a part of this and to share some stuff. Again, if you want to find out more information about my tribe or the organization, Natives for Nature, that's the only social media platform that we're on as of right now. But yeah. Uh, I just want to say thank you for having me be a part of this. Yeah, uh, I just want to let people know that it is a Tongva-led organization, Natives for Nature, and um, just wanted to let people know that we are out there, we're still here, and that we're doing everything that everybody else is doing in today's time. Yeah, just to make ourselves visible, you know, that's something that Matt and Julie wanted for us to be visible, so this is my way of letting people know that my tribe's still here and that 
like I said, we're doing the exact same work that everybody else is doing out there. You know, we're not just cultural people. We are people of educators. We are musicians, artists of different types, politicians. You know, we do a lot of stuff. And here I wanted for Natives for Nature is just get people out in nature. You know, you don't need a thing I like to tell people is you don't need to be na a native to attend our events, you know, because at one point in time, our ancestors were native to somewhere, you know. So this is my way of getting people out there. And um, now that it's summertime, we're going to be doing community beach gatherings for whoever's comfortable, you know, and obviously in small groups and stuff like that, respecting COVID protocol. But like I said, just to get people out there in nature, yeah, hopefully bring a, a educational perspective to my workshops, you know, letting people know that why our connection to nature is so important. And, you know, obviously for us, Tongva people, we didn't have a word for nature because we were part of nature. You know, we all needed each other to survive. You know, we needed the animals and we needed the land and we all needed to live with each other and to learn from each other in order to survive. So if anybody wants uh, information to find out more about like uh, how to volunteer or support our Instagram is natives, the number four nature. We're going to be having a mountain cleanup coming up soon with my cousin's organization. Canyon City Environmental Project out of Azusa. People want to probably want to, want to know what the word for butterfly is. Couldn't find the exact word for monarch, but for butterfly in our language, it would have been atava. And um, the only thing I was trying to find out too for the milkweed related of like what we use, I do know that we use the... Um, we use it for string and fiber to make rope, like a cordage. That was the only thing I could really get on that type of stuff. I'm sure there's other Tongva people out there that are more influent because the, the plants is not really my thing. I'm a cultural dancer for the San Gabriel Band. Yeah, if anybody wants to find out more information on us, though, you know, feel free to follow Natives for Nature. If you have any questions or anything like that, I know we're going to be posting more dates as time goes by. But like I said, as of right now, we just have those main things that I mentioned, the hikes, the mountain cleanups that's going to be coming up. As again, I'm still waiting for my cousin's different, uh, organization to give me like a specific date and everything like that. Well, like I said, we, we wanted to have Josh here um, but he had uh, some other commitments to go to. I really thank you, Josh, for recording that last minute for us last night. And for Ashley, too, for putting that together. Very last minute. Thank you. Um, so Josh is at, on Instagram, Natives4, the, the number four, Natives for Nature. Um, and he, he had an L.A. River cleanup um, last weekend. And he's hoping to have some more events going forward. So this is the time when we want to um, start to say goodbye. Ashley, could you throw the slideshow on there for us? Or Izzy, if you guys, if, if one of you can. Um, so I just want to give thanks to my compa, my friend Rico, who opened us up, and to Josh, who helped close us up, and to the amazing speakers who came today, it, I'm, I'm, I think it went pretty good for being a, a free <laughs> the event that had very little experience behind the, the scenes here. Ashley, you did amazing. Izzy, you did amazing. Leslie, you did amazing. Um, you can find us, you can hold your phone up and scan to find how to donate and support these things. I want to do another one next year. We want to do all sorts of conferences and we want to go collect millions of milkweed seed and we want to make them free for the community. Everyone from the folks who hang out in the back of the 7-Elevens to the folks who own the 7-Elevens. We want to, I don't know why I'm talking about 7-Eleven, maybe because Andy was talking about that 7-Eleven out by Oxnard College. I know very well, Andy, if you're still on, bought many of Mickey's right there. But anyways, I want to give a huge hug to everyone who is still here. We started with close to 500 people. We have 240 people still here. Un gran abrazo para todos mis amigos, mis compadres. Thank you guys for sticking around. I encourage you guys to please reach out to whoever 
you felt closest to. Um, these folks are here for you. Josh is here for you. I'm here for you. Um, Noe at Yes Yes Nursery is there for you. She wants to show you how to do your own nursery. Um, Andy wants to get you involved in Ventura County. Richard wants to connect with you in Northridge. The CMPS in Santa Monica wants you in the Sepulveda cleaning up. Um, so part of the goal is to get this information free and put it in your hands. We're not powerless almost ever. Things can be hard, but we're almost never powerless. So hopefully you guys have the power. The five things we wanna encourage you guys to do at this second is to cut back your tropical milkweeds from November to March. Make sure that they're cut back. Plant native milkweeds, plant native milkweeds, plant pollinator plants so that the monarchs can sip early and late. Don't, plant, don't spray pesticides in your gardens, por favor. That stuff lasts forever and it will, it will hurt your, your babies. And just talk to your neighbors if you can. Talk to your landscapers. And um, instead of being afraid and being sad, sometimes let's have the power. So um, I just want to close it with what uh, Rico told us that morning, that when we take care of local milkweeds, we take care of local monarchs and we take care of local people. And that's what this conference is all about. Thank you guys for making uh, Ashley, Izzy, Leslie and my dreams come true. I remember when we had the conversation six weeks ago, are we gonna do this? We have no speakers, I guess so. So I encourage you guys to stay tuned with us on Instagram, on Samofun. We're thinking about doing other conferences like propagation conferences landscape maintenance conferences, native food conferences. So we can only do that with your support. So thank you guys very, very much. Un gran abrazo. Izzy, Ashley, Leslie, do you guys have anything that you wanna to say to the people? Uh, yep, really quickly, I'd like to add, um, we can send um, an email with links for all of the speakers who talked today out to you guys. If you um, need that all in one place, we can send that out. So feel free to reach out to them. And thank you. <laughs> yeah, a super huge thanks to all of our speakers and our sponsors. Um, we will get the recordings out to you guys or either on our YouTube, just anywhere where it's accessible. Um, and I'd love to end us with a quote um, from one of my teachers. He says, hope grows, hope lasts, hope gives. Hope begins with what goes unseen, but it grows when we believe in it. It is that belief and dedication that hope continues to grow and inspire. Thank you, everyone. And I hope you have a, a great rest of your day. <laughs>